This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. So now we have some ISO images in our library, and let's say we want to attach those ISO images to a virtual machine's DVD drive. So let's go over to our VMs and services, and let's take Server 100, for example. If I right-click on it and go to Properties, go to Hardware Configuration, select my virtual DVD drive. I can go ahead and select existing ISO image, click Browse. It's going to show me all the ISOs in all of my libraries, and I can see the path. Let me just move this over a bit. These are on Storage 01. These ones are on PHX VMM 01. So if I want to go ahead and highlight one, click OK. I have the option to share the file instead of copying it. So by default, it's actually going to copy it. And it's going to copy it to the location of where this virtual machine is at. So let's go over to uh, PHX Hyper-V02 and open up Explorer. Let's go to my C drive in cluster storage. Volume 2 is where server 100 lives. So right now, if I click OK and have the uh, Virtual Machine Manager copy that ISO image, it's actually going to copy it to this location. So depending on the size of the ISO image and uh, well, the size of it, that's going to affect how long it's going to take to copy over and also how much space it's going to take up on my clustered shared volume here. So let's go ahead and see that. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see the copying process is going to happen. So it's not going to immediately attach the ISO image. It's going to have to copy it over and then it will be attached to Server 100's DVD drive. So most likely this isn't going to be what we want. We just want to attach it to where it's at on our library. Okay, so it's just about finished copying over. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here it is. I'm on my cluster shared volume where Server 100 lives and you can see it actually copied the whole ISO image over there. And also, uh, there's a possibility that if we remove this ISO image or detach it from our DVD drive in our virtual machine, that this file may or may not get deleted. So it could be taking up space on a cluster shared volume and it's not even being used. So if we go back to Virtual Machine Manager, it's going to right click on Server 100 again, go to Properties, Hardware Configuration. This time, check the box to share file instead of copying it. So this time, it's going to leave it on the library and just connect to it that way click OK and it didn't actually make the change here. Let's go back to properties hardware configuration we can see that it's not actually checked so let's go ahead and to get it to realize that we want to share it change the ISO image check the box to share file instead of copying it click OK we can see that that failed and this is because we have to configure constrained delegation in order for this to work. So you'd think it'd be pretty easy just to you know, connect to a ISO image that's on a share. Now there are times when we do want to copy the ISO image over to wherever the virtual machine is at. Maybe uh, it's a very important ISO image that always has to be connected to that virtual machine. In that case, we probably just want to copy it over to where it's at and make sure it's always available case somebody you know reboots our library server or something like that then an ISO image wouldn't be available but in general for our ISOs uh, we use them to build server virtual machines or install applications things like that it's kind of temporary we get the job done and then we go back to no media so we detach the ISO image in that case copying the whole ISO image over to wherever the virtual machine is at takes up space and takes too much time so next, we're going to configure constrained delegation so that we can share the file instead of copying it. I'm in the properties of a virtual machine. If I select the DVD drive, go to select an ISO image. Let's go ahead and select one from our library. Check the box to share the file instead of copying it. Click OK. If we don't have sharing set up for our ISO images, it's going to fail. And there it, it failed. We can actually go to our jobs, take a look, and there it is. User account does not have permission required to open attachment. So we need to set up permissions on our library shares. So if we go to our library, I've got two libraries, PHX VMM01 and Storage01. Each one has a share, a library share, MS SC VMM library and SC VMM library. So I need to set the permissions on these shares. 
One thing also to note real quick, so we go back to that virtual machine that failed. If I right click on it now, you can see almost everything's grayed out. In order to try another change, uh, like you know, attach an ISO image again, I need to repair it. So anytime a job fails, we can either retry, which restarts the uh, failed job from the last known successful checkpoint, or ignore it, which basically says just forget about the failed job, put it back in a usable state, and now I could right click on it and say power it on and try to attach an ISO again. Of course, if I try to attach an ISO at this point, it would just fail again. So we need to set permissions on our library share. So I'm on PHX VMM01 right now, so I'm going to set the permissions on that one. Here it is. Here's the share. I'm going to right click on it and go to properties. First, let's set the sharing permissions. Let's go to advanced sharing, click on permissions, and we need to add our VMM service account. This is the account that Virtual Machine Manager is running under. And then we also need to add the computer account for each of our Hyper-V hosts. So I'm going to check computers and type in PHX Hyper-V01, PHX Hyper-V02, and PHX Hyper-V03. Now go ahead and check the names, make sure I typed them in right. There they are. Click OK. And we need to give each one read access. And by default, that's what it gives it, read access. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Click OK again. Now let's go over to security, our NTFS permissions, and do the same thing. So I'm going to add my VMM service account and my Hyper-V hosts. Let's go ahead and check computers here. Check the names. Click OK, and again, by default, it gives it read access, and that's what we need to give it. Now, I have a cluster in my environment, HV Cluster 01. It is possible that if you run into problems, you need to add the cluster computer account. So there's an HV Cluster 01 computer account. If I go to Add, make sure Computers is checked, Add HV Cluster 01 add that and give it read access both for NTFS and sharing permissions as well so that's possible in your environment you may have to do that you shouldn't have to but if you run into problems it's something to try so I'm going to remove it also in a very specific scenario where your uh, library server is a virtual machine that's actually on a host that's managed by virtual machine manager you may have to add the local network service account so network service and again give it read permissions both NTFS and sharing permissions Again, you shouldn't have to but if you run into problems it's definitely worth trying so I'll go ahead and click OK so that's one of my library shares we've done that one I need to set permissions on each one so I've got two so I'll go ahead and go to that one okay I'm on storage 01 let's open up explore this is where our other library share is and we're going to do the exact same thing. There's the share. I'll go to properties. So I'm just going to do it real quick. Go to sharing, advanced sharing, permissions. Let's add. Add our VMM service and our Hyper-V hosts. Change our object types. Select computers. Click OK. Click OK again. Go over to security. Edit. Same thing. Add our VMM service, our Hyper-V hosts, give them read access, and that's what it gives it by default. Click OK and click Close. So now we have permissions set properly on our library shares. Next, we need to set up constrained delegation. Now I'm on a domain controller. Let's go to Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers. We're going to set up constrained delegation for our ISO sharing in Active Directory. I'm going to go to the OU where my computer accounts are. You can see there are my hosts, PHX Hyper-V 1, 2, and 3. Those are the ones we're going to configure. One thing to note is we also may find that we need to configure this same thing for our cluster computer account. We shouldn't have to, but just know that uh, if you run into problems again, it's the next thing to wor uh, it's worth trying. So I'm going to right-click on one of my hosts, PHX Hyper-V 1. Go to the Delegation tab. Select Trust This Computer for Delegation of specified services only. Select use any authentication protocol, that's important. Click add. Select users and computers. We're going to add our library servers. 
So my library servers are PHX VMM01 and Storage01. Click OK. And we're going to add SIFs for all of our library servers. So I'm going to add SIFs here for Storage01 and PHX VMM01. Click OK. And click OK again. So we're going to do that exact same thing for each one of our Hyper-V hosts. Go to Delegation, Trust this computer, use any authentication protocol, add PHX VMM01 and Storage01, select SIFs for both library servers, click OK, click OK again. Same thing for PHX Hyper-V03, Delegation, Trust this computer, use any authentication protocol, add our library servers. Select SIFs and click OK. And that's it for configuring constrained delegation. Now, what is constrained delegation? Well, it's similar to impersonation where the uh, person or user account that makes the request is not the account that actually accesses the, in our case, the ISO image. So if we go back to Virtual Machine Manager, look at VMs and Services or actually go back to our jobs that failed, we can see uh, server 105 user account. So each of these virtual machines has a user account. Well, we're not going to set up permissions so that each one of these virtual machines user account has permissions to access the ISO image. What constrained delegation does is it allows the account requesting it, which is in this case server 105, to impersonate or pass on the credentials of the original requester and on our library sh shares we gave read permission to the virtual machine manager service account and each of the Hyper-V host computer accounts as well as uh, you know if we needed to the cluster account or the net local network service account so those accounts have permissions to make that request and then server 105 can actually uh, pass on those credentials and be able to access that ISO image Interestingly enough, now that we've configured constrained delegation and permissions on our library shares, ISO sharing might not work right away. So if I right-click on my virtual machine, go to Properties, and let's go to Hardware Configuration, Virtual DVD Drive, select a DVD from my library, check the box to share the file instead of copying it, click OK. So it, it may work at this point. Okay, and it did work for me. And if realistically, if we waited a bit, it should work. Uh, but kind of to force the new permissions and constrained delegation that we set up in Active Directory to take effect, we can actually just migrate one virtual machine. And this is kind of specific to a cluster. With a standalone host, it should work pretty much right away. Uh, you may have to wait a little bit for replication and things like that to occur. But migrating a virtual machine will actually kind of force it to uh, get new Kerberos tickets, the accounts in question. So if I just right-clicked on this virtual machine, let's say server 103, and migrate the virtual machine, migrate it over to PHX Hyper-V01, And now I should be able to attach my ISO image. Right-click if I had problems uh, with attaching, if it failed again. So now if it failed again, I could try it again. I'd probably have to right-click and click on Repair, Repair it, the one that failed, and then try to attach the ISO image again. But once it's set up, you should be good to go, not have any problems with it going forward. And in most cases, attaching an ISO image and sharing it is going to be what we want as opposed to copying it over, which can take a lot of time and use disk space on our clustered shared volumes.